Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. It's a good job I've got my raincoat on this morning because I promise you it's gonna absolutely throw it down with rain before I finish filming this video. Right, where are we? We are in North Lincolnshire, and a few weeks ago you saw East Halton, and this is its western brother. This is West Halton. This North Lincolnshire episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find her link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. West Halton is a village and civil parish in North Lincolnshire, situated approximately seven miles north of Scunthorpe and two miles south of the Humber Estuary. At the 2001 census, the parish had a population of 331, which increased slightly to 340 by the 2011 census. It's governed by West Halton and Colby Parish Council. I'll explain why there's a name difference in a short while. For many years, up until 1861, the parish was much larger and included a portion of Gunnis Parish as a chapelry. West Halton has existed since at least the Anglo-Saxon period, when it was traditionally thought to have been founded as a monastery or a minster by St. Ethelthrith. It's listed in the Doomsday Book as Hal Tone, spelt with an E. Excavations by the University of Sheffield confirmed the presence of a 7th century settlement at West Halton. It was chosen as a case study through which to understand the organisation and development of Anglo-Saxon and late medieval settlements and cemeteries in this area of North Lincolnshire. It found the village had a medieval manorial complex abandoned at some point in the later medieval or early post-medieval period. I'll show you where that was in a bit. A variety of prehistoric finds and features were identified around the village as well. Ring ditches were identified from crop marks at several locations. As for the name, it translates to farmstead in a nook or corner of land. There's not much out there for this one other than what I've told you already, so I've had to dig quite deep to find the rest of this stuff. The Primitive Methodists built a chapel here in 1877. Currently, the Antiochian Greek Orthodox have a chapel here according to my sources, placing it at Manor Farm close to Colby. There was a parish school and it was built here in 1856. By 1871 it was schooling about 20 children. These days, children attend school in other nearby villages like Winteringham. Speaking of Winteringham, West Halton is similar in that it also had a railway station, built in 1906 by the North Lindsay Light Railway on its line from Scunthorpe to Witten. Passenger services consisted of three trains each way between Scunthorpe and Winteringham. The station closed in 1925. Let's have a look at the demographics next. West Halton's population is spread over an area covering a shade under 8 square kilometres. That means its population density is 47.01. The age groups are interesting. Way over 62% of people are of working age, suggesting a lot of commuters. There are very few children here, just 65 according to the latest census. Ethnically, this is typical for North Lincolnshire once again, with 98.2% of the residents identifying as white British. Based on three sales in the last 12 months, West Halton's average house price is pretty good. It comes in at a tidy looking £255,000. The church here is dedicated to St. Etheldreda. It was rebuilt in 1695 as a replacement for an earlier building that was destroyed by fire in 1692. This is Grade 2 listed. The rebuild used the already existing medieval masonry. There was also a further restoration in 1876 by Fowler, who rebuilt the chancel. 
Historic England notes that St. Etheldred's Church has had some issues in the past with its upkeep. On the door, I found this notice about how you can donate one pound a week to help keep it going. On that note, the church had a scheme of repairs funded by a National Lottery Heritage Fund grant for places of worship completed in 2019. West Halton has just the one public house, and that's the Butcher's Arms. This is a traditional village pub with masses of charm and character. What Pub, who last reviewed the pub in 2018, tells us it's divided into two small rooms which gives it a cosy and quaint feel. One of the rooms has an open fire, and there's a quiz night on a Friday. West Halton has a village hall, which has served as a part-time post office since the village post office closed. There are no shops in the village, though. So, so far, this is the only parish notice board I've found. It's in, it's in the car park of the village hall, but the gate's locked. I don't know whether I'll be able to reach it. I'll try. Not quite. Um, I'll tell you what, there's a letterbox. Let's put it on the letterbox. There we go. <laughs> That's good enough. It's near enough. Right next to the village hall is the massive West Halton Village Green. This is the location of the aforementioned medieval manorial complex, and these days it's primarily a playing field. West Halton and Colby Parish Council proudly maintain a standard sized football pitch on the green, which is available for use free of charge. It's centrally located, surrounded on almost all sides by a low wall, and it's in immaculate condition. It's not flat either, which is actually helpful. It meant I could stand on one of the raised areas, this one known as Bunkers Hill, and show you exactly how much you can see from it. It might not be Mount Everest, but it's still a lovely view. Tell you what, as village greens go, this one is extremely well maintained. I'm stood on a little mound on the village green. It's like a little mountain. You get some cracking views up here. Isn't that amazing there, look? And it's so well maintained, the grass is all nicely neatly cut. That's a testament to the, uh, the groundskeepers. And the green also has a small play area in one corner, meaning the youngsters in West Halton are also looked after. Landmarks time, and first up is the Manor House, which is just a few paces from the church. A Grade 2 listed building since 1967, this is easily the most striking building in the village. There's a stream running through the village as well, just south of the church. It doesn't appear to have a name, but it runs into Halton Drain, which eventually becomes Haven Drain at Winteringham. So you recall the phone box in Winteringham didn't have anything in it, it was nothing to write home about really. It's the same story here in West Halton. I don't think people tend to use the uh, phone boxes for anything like book exchanges or defibrillators in this part of Lincolnshire. I don't know why. In St. Etheldred's churchyard, there's a monument to one man from World War I and a second monument to another from World War II, this being the latter. And lastly, we have a cemetery which is on the road out of the village to the south. This looks fairly new because there didn't appear to be a vast number of headstones. It's designed specifically for people who have resided in the parish of West Halton at the time of their death, or have left the parish no more than five years previously. Okay, that was a very delightful main walk around West Halton. We're not quite finished though, because West Halton also covers Colby, which is a tiny little hamlet to West Halton South. Let's go there to finish this one off. The parish contains part of Colby, a hamlet south of the village. This is why West Halton's parish council is termed West Halton and Colby. It's important to note though that not all of the hamlet falls within the boundaries, although most of it does. There are just a handful of properties belonging to neighbouring Altborough. Colby predates the Norman conquest. Its name is derived from Old Norse, meaning farmstead of a man named Colley. It has 28 dwellings, including three farms, these being Eastdale Farm, Hall Farm and Manor Farm. The village also has allotments, but no shops or public houses, and its telephone box was removed in 2008. We didn't mention buses in West Halton, but you can catch one here. Public transport is subsidised by North Lincolnshire Council, 
the number 60 is the bus you need. Colby is also the name of another Lincolnshire village and civil parish in its own right in North Kesteven, which is six miles south of Lincoln. The two should not be confused. You'd do well to mix them up anyway. That village sports a population of 410, it's on a main road, the A607, and has some RAF history to it. This is much smaller, and certainly a lot more peaceful. And there you have it, that is West Halton. There's no picture bit today because uh, it's too small to warrant one. Uh, so it's time for me to move on to my next one. <laughs> nice little walk around, nice little village, nice little hamlet in Colby as well. And it's nice and peaceful too. All I've heard all day um, have been the sounds of the birds tweeting in the trees and all around. It's very nice, it's very nice. This is why I like to do it, I like to hear things like that. This has been the parish of West Halton and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.